Hello, this is Sweetie Bot. I, I do everything around here, and I do not get any thanks. You're listening to the NBS Show. Hello and welcome to the NBS Show, episode number 99. We're doing it for the kids. I'm your host, Norman Sanzo, and with me today is James Cork. We are doing it for the kids? What the- That's not a word! What are you talking about? Remember when we had that... Talk before when I told you that certain brony shows are meant for adults or teens, and I said we do this with kids in mind. And that's why I start every episode saying a swear word. It's good for the kids. <laughs> uh, your reaction back then was much more funnier. But anyway, James, how are you doing? I think I'm doing okay. I'm not sure. I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> I am coming down with the... Uh, I, I'm just trying to recover from this week's episode, which was amazing. I kind of wait to talk about it in the other show. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we're, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. How are you? That's good to know. I'm fine too. Had a busy day. Uh, believe it or not, I was stuck in two hours of jam. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, wow. That sucks. Yeah, I know. And what could take me a 20 minute drive took me two hours. Hmm. Yeah, so no fun. Like, hmm. But anyway, nobody's interested in listening to my story of being stuck in traffic, so... Nobody cares for you, Norman. They just listen to the show because of me. True, you are the Spaniard, the sexy one. Of course, they only want their sexy Spaniard to tackle their cochlea. <laughs> <laughs> um, technically, you're the only Spaniard, so yay. Yeah, I know, I'm the sexy one out of, elimin- uh, out of an elimination process. Indeed. And also, um, fun fact for today, we're on James Cork's live stream. And if you would like to be here live with all the dirts without any edited things from Sweetie Board, join us at James Cork's stream at livestream.com slash James Cork stream. I hear it when you say my name with your accent. Oh, you love it. I know you do. No, I don't. <laughs> I hate it. I'm sorry. Maybe I should become sketchy sounds. I would like to have a sketchy around. Yeah. If you say his name three times, he'll appear, right? <laughs> what? Is he like Biggie Smokes? That's a joke for those of you who have, who watch South Park. Uh, you know, sketchy sounds, sketchy sounds, sketchy sounds. Nope. <laughs> so there's a two of us for this week. We're dumping really hard. But anyway, let's move on to the next topic. Um, for your information, no guess for this week. So moving on to housekeeping. We're about to hit our 100 episode, and that is going to be on February 1st. And we want you to be a part of it. We want you to send us an email asking us anything you want. If your email gets read on the show, we'll give you a shout out. Due date is before February 1st, and you can send your questions to us at the MBS show at gmail.com. Also, join us on James's live stream and be a part of the show that way too. With any special episode, we have a special guest. And that guest is the one and only Amy Keating Rogers, writers, story and story editors for shows like Dexter's Laboratory, Johnny Bravo, The Powerpuff Girl, Samurai Jack, Danny Phantom, Forster's Home for Imaginary Friends, My Life as a Teenage Robot, and My Little Pony Franchise Magic. Join us on the live stream on Saturday, February 1st at 1 p.m. Eastern. So, James, what do you think? I think it's going to be awesome. Uh, And everybody should be there. Everybody who's listening right now, guys, we're going to have none other than Amy Keating Rogers, the author of episodes like A Friend Indeed, Bridal Gossip, The Best Night Ever, The Last Roundup, and Mystery on the Friendship Express. Okay? We're going to have this super talented writer who is working on season four, who wrote three episodes, one of them next week's, and she's going to be here in the show, very nice, very uh, graceful of her, answering questions for us. And the best part is, it's going to be right after the Weird Al episode. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be right after next week's episode, which features voice actor and singer Weird Old Jankovic. Ah, I, I, I'm just so high. Oh, God. The hypeness meter for me is so high. I, I um, just hype, just hype, just hype. So hype, so hype, so hype. If you want, if you can't, if you must, no. Well, you know what? No must, no can. You need to be here. Mm-hmm. You need to come. 
You need to be around and you need to watch the stream happen because it's going to be all shades of cool. Yep, yep. And you, if you like to hear her answers being spoken to you, well, join the stream. And you know what? Uh, sometimes she may not read your tweet, but over here, your chances are high because, well, like today we have only 12 people and if you ask something, I might notice it and ask a question to her. So, yay. It's a shame that I'm lacking a toaster in my house, says Rancic on the chat. Well, Rancic, I feel for you. Wow. I needed to bring up that comment because it's so random. I cannot keep it. And that's the example of how your message can be read on the show. And one of your questions could be read to Amy Kitty Rogers. So randomly like that. So anyway, James, let's move on to the next topic. Let's move on to the next stop. And next topic is news time. In today's news time... Princess Morley may be gone, but Gamer Luna is here to stay. Yeah, apparently, what uh, this uh, this is something that was kind of on the works for the longest time. Um, if you people don't remember, this is not the first time they tried to take down John Hoseko's blog uh, as Princess Molestia. They tried to take it down in 2012, and it didn't work out. It didn't fall through, and they they returned the blog back to JJ. Like three, uh, two, one or two hours after the the blog was taken down by Tumblr, because people wanted to, wanted to, be, to get back, so they got it back. Now, when that happened, John Joseco took his time and decided to make an alternate blog focused on Gamer Luna. But then, when he got his Tumblr back, he forgot about that blog and just needed didn't bring it back ever again. Now that the blog, uh, now that Molestia is gone for good, he decided to bring it back and go back to Gamer Luna. And holy cow, he got like 11,000 followers in two days. That is unbelievable. Uh, that's even, even for a, even for a, for a big figure in the fandom like John Jose is, that is really big. Mm-hmm. And well, links can be found in the show notes. So far, it has two updates up to the date of this blog. It's uh, and it's really adorable. It's really fun. It's basically what you can expect a gamer Luna to be doing. Indeed, indeed. But I do fear that it's almost following um, Princess Moldy to a point. Not really, because this blog is clearly safe for work. So for starters, you know there is going to be little to no plot shots. Mm, true, but the I think it. In the recent update with the football thing, it's teasing, almost getting caught to where... Uh. You know what, you know what, I will just simply say, guys, it's not only is it funny, but Luna has always had that silver lining of, oh my, this is actually kind of interesting. <laughs> uh, but she's fun, she's fun. It's, it's a wonderful idea, and I'm very happy to see her back. Besides, you know what? I'm pretty sure people may not pe- people are not going to agree with me, but I'm just going to say it. Something tells me people were watching uh, Molly because of Luna, like in later dates. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, like something tells me that people were getting tired of the the plot shots, the the, the raunchy sense of humor, the constant innuendo. They were getting tired of that, and they just wanted to see Luna fangasming over some video games. And the resurgence of followers that the blog got in a couple of days kind of confirms my suspicions. Yeah, but I think most of them are fans of JJ, so they follow... Well, if you remember, uh, also the, uh, JJ said he wanted to give the blog a closure. He wanted to give uh, to give it an ending. If you remember, the blog has always had this almost invisible storyline where Molly has mummy issues with the Fausticorn, mm-hmm. and something tells me that he wants to give that storyline closure. Mm. He wants to he wants to like close that door, and he was unable to when the blog was shut down. But now with Gamer Luna, he might be able to give it just that. And yeah, who knows? Maybe we're going to see Molly appearing in the background. Mm-hmm. Me and you had a theory where where I said to you that um, JJ's not going to draw Molly anymore. She's just going to draw Celestia. Yeah, yeah. That's the one thing that I am not going to believe. Um, it's, it is it, it is clear that this takes place within the, the Molly universe. So it's going to, it's going to be pink-haired princess. And his recent update about football, 
I think Molly may still exist, but her appearance may not be there. Or even if JJ does draw Molly, it's going to be a black and white shot. So we will never know if it's Molly or Celestia. I don't think so, because if it were Celestia, we will see the different uh, uh, shades of grey <laughs> on her mane. And it, it, it will be clear that, oh yeah, there's, there's, there's Sally. If it's just one single color, it's definitely Molly. Well, we'll, we'll soon see if JJ starts drawing Celestia in the updates. But anyway, let's move on to the next news. In the next news is My Little Pony comic Friends Forever issue 1 is out. If you need more pony comics by IDW, you're in luck. A new series for the My Little Pony comics are out and they are called My Little Pony Friends Forever. The comic takes two characters from the series and pair them up in a funny and interesting situation. Issue 1 is out and it features Applejack and Pinkie Pie! Oh no! Ah, kill you! Why do you have to ruin it like that? Just for funsies. Oh. You can get it at Comixology and iTunes. Links can be found in the show notes. So James, you got it? Yes, I got it. I read it. I loved it. I, I absolutely loved it. I'm going to say this right now. If you didn't like the art style of the Twilight Sparkle Micro, you are mm. not going to enjoy the art style on this one because they are very, mm. very similar. similar. Some mm. of the characters look very weird and mm. some of the expressions are not entirely there. However, mm. the story and the way it's carried is fantastic. I have to agree part ways. For me, the beginning was a bit off. I was really confused at the beginning because I didn't know where it was going, but then it strained mm. itself uh, 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 towards the end, and it just kept getting better and better. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay, if you know if you don't know the story, I will, will tell you. If you haven't read the the comic, skip to the to the, to the following timestamp. We will let you know. Okay, you can yeah. you can just uh, skip on the video. Norman will put a, an annotation, and he will. He will link you to it. But we're going to talk about the newest MLP comic. And if you haven't read it, just skip to the timestamp right now. Okay, so yeah, uh, the story of the comic is that Pinkie Pie is taking place in a in a food eating co- not in a food cooking contest, kind of like Iron uh, a la Iron Chef, uh, representing Ponyville, and she's competing against other towns with their different representatives. Applejack is involved, but she's only taking the supplies. And she gets confused by one of the participants, and she ends up scoring one of the prizes. Not wanting to continue on, and noticing that one of the uh, participants needs to win the prize in order to save her bakery, Pinkie Pie and, and Applejack start losing on purpose. Now this other pony notices that she, uh, the, they are letting her win, so she says, you don't have to make me win. It's not a victory if you don't let me win. So they just start competing fair and square against each other. Reaching the desserts part, they suddenly get attacked by, and I mean literally attacked, by the contestant that got confused for Applejack. And she starts freezing people with icing. That's where the comic started to lose me. Here we have kind of like a cutesy, woodsy, food cooking, baking contest. And all of a sudden, we have Mr. Freeze from Batman (laughs) showing up and killing ponies. Oh, my God. Okay, not killing. She's just freezing them. But who says they're going to become unfreeze? Hey, James, have an ice day. (laughs) I'm going to kill you several times. The pun. You don't reference that. (laughs) <laughs> uh, but a credit card. <laughs> oh, God. But anyway. Yeah, you, you said that part um, lost you, right? For me, it was the beginning because when I first read it, it was like, um, this is interesting. I don't know where this is going, but it, it's meh. But after when it reached the middle, it got interesting for me. The part that got me. This is kind of weird. I got the mood whiplashed by the comic. I, I liked it, but I got mood wish- whiplashed because here I am, normal, com- normal comic, normal story, blah, blah, blah. And then this, uh, this filly that wants to win, she presents a dessert, which is a Spanish dessert. 
is actually they, they they say it in Spanish in the comic and everything is accurate and the way it's baked as well is accurate and all that and it even looks like it and I'm like oh my god that's so sweet the winning food is a Spanish food I'm so happy and then freeze ray and I, whoa <laughs> I'm having an emotional moment and you would whiplash me with with the Batman villain what in the world is wrong with you people. It was a very weird mood we, we blushed, but I had a lot of fun. It, it's one of those, it's one of the, one of the few comics that actually feels like, uh, like an episode of the show rather than uh, being its complete separate thing. Those are probably the best kind of comics. The ones that try to be, uh, a, a, an episode of the show, of the show verbatim or the ones that don't try to be at all. When you try to combine the both together, mm-mm, mm-mm. Which I think that's what the, that was the problem with the Applejack Micro. Uh, yeah, Applejack Micro was. Uh, it, mm, no. The Applejack Micro was about, was rather disappointing. Yeah, yeah. people has a, have a lot of problems with Applejack in the show, saying that she's a background pony, blah blah blah. Yeah, okay, funny, haha, laugh, laugh all you want. But uh, now it's her time to shine in the in her own micro and. Nope, she can't even get that right. Oh God! Yeah, but that's the pro- That there was a problem because of the way they portrayed Applejack. They were portraying season one Applejack. But the thing is, Applejack learned her lesson. So why? <laughs> Question from the chat, James. What do you think of of, of the latest bookworm comic? I think it completely tramples the continuity of the show. Like it takes an arrow and a bow, and it shoots an arrow straight into the continuity is hard because it's like, okay, at the beginning of the micro, they actually start talking about uh, when they got trapped into the comic book, like in Power Ponies. And I'm like, oh, cool, continuity. But then literally three pages later, we are showed that Red Hindu is a fictional character. James, I have a rebuttal for that. The situation, how that happened was the character daring do in the novel was transported into the real world because of the bookworm you know how eat 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 and then a pupa comes out in the real world and when that becomes real she's there and to me that is fictional daring do not the real daring do the real daring do is somewhere out there doing stuff you're talking about what happens in in movies like night at the museum where you have robin williams being teddy roosevelt but he is not the real Teddy Roosevelt. He's a statue of Teddy Roosevelt that came to life. In the same way, the Daring Do that comes out of the pupa is uh, the, 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 the book version of Daring Do instead of being the real Daring Do, which is out there. Yes. You know, I am willing to admit that, but they should either address it or, like, explain it. Because if you're going to bring the continuity, if you're going to go right, right now, my little pony is standing in a very weird position. Both the comic books and the the, the actual show, in that they, they, I'm pretty sure they want to bring in continuity and adult subjects and all that, and that's nice, that's cool. But they're not going all the way there. They're they're stopping halfway through. Either go all the way any any which way. Don't try to do both. I think that the creators think the audience is smart enough to figure that one out. Remember what we're talking about here. <laughs> we're, all, we're talking about... No, 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 no. Okay, I'm going to be completely cynical right now, but you're going to understand why I say this. Mm-hmm. When our fan base is, uh, is mostly based on people that spend their lives on the internet. I'm pretty sure we have a bunch of intelligent people, but many times I assume that we can be very dumb as well. You know what? I think this is not just me being cynical. I think this is me being... That's not a word! ...sincere. But anyway, still, um, I personally love book number 15 and the new uh, micro-series of the Friends Forever series. It's interesting. I can't wait for the next issue, which is the QD1 Crusaders and Discord. <laughs> that one is going to be fun. Um, I wonder why it, why it takes them so long to bring in Discord into the mix. And I think, I think, they are the, I think one of the reasons they are doing it... Uh, yeah, I think I figured it out. Maybe they want to keep, to keep Discord as far away from the villain roles as possible. And, well, Discord's position right now, where he is and how he is with everyone in the show, is he friend or foe, or is he up to his old ways or not, and how far can the writers for the comic use um, Discord in the comics without 
um, touching the show because if you think about it, Discord is coming out next month. The episode with Discord was today, so they didn't really do much with Discord. Well, they are saving on that, and I cannot blame them. It's actually, I kind of appreciate that, actually, because too much of one thing is not good. It never is. True, 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 true. But anyway, um, if you want to get those comics, you can get it at Comixology and iTunes. Links will be provided in the show notes. Okay, and I think I'm going to open up a, a section for this one episode, and this is going to be kind of experimental. Because right now we have 15 viewers on the stream, which is wonderful, and they seem to be very active. The chat is moving all the time. So I think I'm going to do something, and I'm going to open up the chat for questions, and we're going to read up your name, and we're going to answer the questions that you want to ask us. And I know you, you are my people, you are my denizens. I trust you. (laughs) But try and keep it mature, and try and keep it interesting, okay? So without further ado, go ahead, ask us whatever you want. True, true. So this is uh, AMA and TMI? Yes. Cool. This is my first time doing so. Yay! Yes, yes, go ahead, guys. Ask a question, and, and we, will, we will address them. Carbanese asks, why so much hate to Speedfire? I think that the reason why people might be mad at Speedfire is uh, because of the way she was acting on this episode, on last week's episode, Rainbow Falls, compared to how she was acting on uh, Wonder Balls Academy in Season 3. In that it looked like she hadn't learned anything from uh, the last time that she interacted with Rainbow Dash. And in, and in this re- in this regard, I will agree with those who complain about it. I think her behavior was probably not the best. Personally, for me, no. I don't have that much hate. Yeah, no, I don't have that much hate either. Uh, I I can't see her reaction and I can see her 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 reasons. Like I don't think she was very nice, but at least her character arc had a middle a, a beginning, a middle and an end. They closed her character, they redeemed her, so that's why I don't hate her. Kentax two thousand and twelve asks, Do you think next week's episode will be in Kiss Key? Could be, possibly, because it's a party pony and this new character seems to be partying all around, so I think Pinky will discover her, or rediscover, or realize her element even further. One of the things that this show is having is that you cannot predict what the next episode is going to be, even though, and it's, it's like, how can this show be so predictable and yet not predictable at all? Mm. Because nobody could predict that Rainbow Falls was going to give us the possibility of Rainbow Ski. Which we don't mm-hmm. know exactly, but they, well, it's very foreshadowed, the whole rainbow theme, rainbow motif and all that. But to be honest, I think, yes, we're going to see that. Well, how do I put this? In the first one, Rarity Takes Manhattan, that one was all about generosity, blah, blah, blah. And suddenly, oh, someone gifted Rarity this spool. And okay, um, that was unexpected. And the second one was Rainbow Falls, where we see Spitfire giving Rainbow Dash a pin. And the whole rain boom in the eyes realization kind of moment. And I'm seeing a pattern here, because next week's episode is going to be called... What was it again, James, if you remember? Next week's episode is Pinky Pride. Okay, see, are you, are you looking at a pattern here? Yeah. So it is Rarity Takes Manhattan, Rainbow Falls... Pinky Pride. They, the names of the characters are on the title of the episode. So it could be. Hmm. Who knows? Like, maybe the next one would be, I don't know, something, something. <laughs> well, it would be interesting to see what happens in the future. Personally, I don't think we are going to, it's going to take forever to see the different keys that all the characters are going to end up having towards the end of the season. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Mm-hmm. And also, there's a question by Kenta. Kenta asks, do you think Twilight will get her key at the end of the season? Do you know what? I had a thought the other day. Uh, has any of you watched uh, the third season of Doctor Who? Third season meaning Tenant, right? Yeah, season three of Doctor Who that starring David Tennant with Martha Jones as the assistant. Martha Jones. Martha Jones is the... She's the nurse. Nurse. Oh, nurse. Okay. Yeah, 
the, they are the uh, uh, that season is the season that had the one episode that everybody loves, uh, Blink. Oh, love that one. Yeah. Okay. So, if you remember the ending of that season, the season finale wasn't a two-parter. It, it was a three-parter. At one point, it was kind of like ridiculous of how over the top and intense the things were getting that they actually had to That's not a word. their way out of it. Like, oh my god, this guy is impossible to beat. He's unbeatable. What are we going to do? So they had to That's not a word. their way out of it. Uh, because of how much of a, how much they had cornered the heroes in the, in the, in the problem. So uh, something tells me that we're going to have a three parter in season four. That the, the season four finale is going to be three episodes. Uh, I don't mind, but I don't see it being possible. Why not? I don't know. It's kind of, rare that we see any kids show having a three-part episode like back in the days it's possible but now especially for a kids show like this it's hard well that's unfair for you to say that because we have a series like legend of korra or the last airbender that had a storyline going and it's not just one or two episodes it's like an entire season well but the focus for that episode was mainly for teens to adults Ah. I know, I know, but you have to remember the target demographic for the show. Yeah, no, I keep it in mind. But still, I don't see it. It's like, why should it be a problem to try and bring in uh, a, 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 a longer storyline when it is pretty clear that right now MLP has a storyline going on, but it's kind of invisible in that you can still watch watch each episode separately and they will make sense. That's the goal has from the beginning, but I don't think uh, we're going far by having this argument because demographic of the show has rose in control. We are not. Mm. Well, we'll wait. We'll wait. We'll wait and see. Uh, like I said, I don't mind, but you know. Uh. Uh, Ken Tax two thousand and twelve again asks: Do you think the Fluttershy episode would introduce a pony version of Hollywood? I don't think just because the episode is called Philly Vanilli will introduce will get introduced to a f- funny version of Hollywood. To be honest with you, um, I got no idea. Fill me in, James. Okay, well, you know the, the pop music group Phil, uh, Millie Vanilli, mm-hmm, the one that did lip syncing. Yes, the well, I don't, I don't remember. I, I'm not a fan. But these guys, uh, this uh, the episode. Uh, the, one of the upcoming episodes for Fluttershy is called Philly Vanilli. And maybe you say that, uh, Ken Tax is saying that because Philly Vanilli sounds like music, celebrities, possibly Hollywood. Personally, I don't think so. I don't think so. I have no idea what the episode is going to be about. I read the plot of it. I read the, 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 the blurb synopsis that appears in the Question Daily. I'm confused by what the episode is going to be because I don't see Fluttershy being like that. I, I want to know what are they going to do with that one episode in particular. That's going to be interesting. Well, for me, I haven't read any spoilers, so this is going to be interesting for me. So, Carpenis has a question here. What's your personal list of best episodes? Oh, wow, you first. Well, uh, Carpenis, you, you do need to be more specific with seasons, because the way I take it is by seasons. <laughs> uh, so my favorite three for season one would be Best Night Ever, Sonic Rain Boom, and also The Cutie Mark Chronicles. This is what I can remember off the top of my head. And for season two would be Lesson Zero, Luna Eclipse, and the third one is Super Squeezy Cider 6000. Super Squeezy Cider Squeezy 6000. Yeah, that's for season two. Season 3 would be One Bad Apple, Sleepless in Ponyville, and Just for Psychics. Hmm. And Season 4, for now, let's see. Power Ponies, Rarity Takes Manhattan, Rainbow Falls because of Derpy, and today's episode, Trees a Crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Today's episode, uh, Season 4 has a lot of good ones. Uh... My turn to say mine. Yep, yep. Okay. Um, I I am very pragmatic when it comes to this. I have had my time to watch all the episodes that this series has to offer. And I put in one episode from each season, just to keep things simple. Sonic Rainbow in Season 1, Sweet and Elite in Season 2, 
Sleepless in Ponyville in Season 3. And last but not least, uh, in Season 4, so far, it's a tie between Power Ponies and Rarity Takes Manhattan. Hmm. No, that is a good one. That's a good one. Because Power Ponies is awesome, jam-packed with action and stuff. And Rarity Takes Manhattan is very thoughtful and thought-provoking. Rarity Takes Manhattan had a lot of things going to it. Which mm-hmm. it's really interesting considering this show. Okay, Carpenese also asked, did you see the latest episode? How was it? Of course, you mean you mean three is a crowd. Yes. Should I answer this or should you go first? Uh, well, uh, if we have watched the episode, it's a very simple answer. Yes. <laughs> yes. For me, it's going to be, oh my god, this is the greatest episode I've seen in my life. You say that every week. Indeed. Seriously, Carpenese, today's episode was. Awesome. This episode was really good. I will just say that I am going to uh, I'm going to rewatch it later on more thoroughly to mm-hmm. know to, to 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 enjoy it because this episode is an overload. This is an overdose of an episode. Yeah, there's a few scenes in the episode that made me laugh because of implications. <laughs> and Ash King says, "Rarity in Manhattan is so far the best episode." I have to agree. Even though it's a rarity episode, I have to agree. It is a good episode. What do you mean, even if it's a rarity? <laughs> implying that whenever she's on screen on an episode, it's a bad episode, you jerk. <laughs> Just making drama for drama sake, James. You idiot. OP is trying to start... That's not a word. But anyway... <laughs> Question asked by Kentax2012. Uh, do you think the next rarity episode will show a side of rich people working the common man? No. I really doubt it. This show would end up going so deep. There is no point for this show to go that level of depth. I guarantee it. Yeah, it, it's too deep. Like, that kind of issue, too deep. Ooh, I, I'm noticing something. Um, Episode 15 for season 4 is called Twilight Time. Key, maybe? <laughs> to be honest, I don't think so. Because I have seen the synopsis of the episode, and it doesn't look like it's going to be a Twilight episode. Okay, it would be fun. But anyway, Kenta, that kind of issue is too deep and too close to home to Hasbro, so maybe no. Yeah, I can imagine Hasbro being completely okay with how we are going to vilify the rich people. (laughs) Yeah, no. To be honest, I think it's a good thing because not all rich people are bad. Mm. Not all celebrities are evil they are not not all of them are justin bieber okay there are celebrities that are genuinely good okay it just depends on how you approach it and how you focus on it Mm -hmm. indeed there's a lot of people like even the not so rich are bad but let's move on so Carpanis asks would you like to see fallout equestria into an episode or movie okay norman go ahead because i'm going to talk a lot about this so please be the first one to, to to answer Short answer, no. Long answer, I don't like to see my ponies getting killed. <laughs> so, no. James? I am so sick of Fallout Equestria. I am sick of it. Sick and tired of it. I don't think it was a bad idea when it first came out, but now it's completely out of control. And I can't take it anymore. If I want Fallout, I will play Fallout. I will crack open my copy of Fallout 3 or Fallout New Vegas, and I will play for a couple of hours, blasting super mutants in the face with my shotgun. Because it's fun. Because the one thing that Fallout Equestria has, regardless of the other spin-offs, is that it takes itself so seriously that it gets disgusting. It's terrible how serious that fanfic takes itself. Mm. I know that Project Horizons doesn't take itself so seriously. I know that. Uh, And I know that because my friend Nick is uh, one of the story editors of that fanfic. But, oh my God, the things that happen in that fanfic are... That's not a word! Horrible! If you want to have a post-apocalyptic cartoon that is both entertaining and also pretty dark, watch Adventure Time. Yep, that is fun. Adventure Time is not only a very good show when it comes to animation and visual style, but also thematically wise, it's probably one of the most upbeat, positive, hopeful series out there. That is full of good characters, full of good humor, very creative settings, and very heavy atmosphere that 
doesn't necessarily have to take itself seriously because it doesn't. But there is that whole desolation and desperation floating in the atmosphere of Adventure Time, and it's so cool. And you can just pick it up and watch it. You don't need to read Fallout Equestria to have a cartoon about the apocalypse. You have Adventure Time right there. Oh, true, true. And moving on from uh, Fallout, uh, Kenta asks, do you think the pony trolls are like some fans of the shonen anime, always arguing with each other about change. Nah, I like to think, I'm pretty sure, this is very wishful thinking, by the way. This is me being a complete dork when it comes to it, but um, in my opinion, when it comes to trolls, this fandom within itself doesn't have any. We have people trying very hard to troll, but they, they, they're pff, amateurs. I have seen so much worse. I have seen such levels of trolling that people in this fandom, they are trying to starting to troll, trying to troll, and not doing a very good job at it. So instead of coming becoming uh, offensive or annoying, it actually becomes kind of cute. <laughs> oh my god, you were trying to troll. You are so adorable. So yeah, in my opinion, I don't think they they are arguing about change. To be honest with you, the people that argue about change are the people that just stepped away from the fandom. And they were like, we don't want to do anything with this fandom. So, in my honest opinion, trolls here? Nah. We have outside trolls, not inside trolls. Now, t- talking about the whole um, fandom leaving stuff, what do you think about that? Like, personally for me, I'm tired of that. Like, I'm leaving the fandom. Ah, nye, 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 nye. I- I'm just tired. People threaten all- each other over the most ridiculous things when it comes to leaving the fandom. Nobody has seen my video in in three weeks. I'm leaving the fandom. They have put... They, they, they are shipping Twilight with another pony. I'm leaving the fandom. Princess Cadence is a... Princess, Princess Cadence is a, is a toy father. She's, she's just a Hasbro's market employee. I'm leaving the fandom. They didn't retcon season, the, the finale of season two. I'm leaving the fandom. I'm becoming a brownie hater. I'm pretty sure people are going to send me angry emails because they know exactly who I'm talking about. And you can send them to james at com. I never checked that email, so please feel free to, feel free to do so. No, but, but seriously, but seriously, I, I don't see the point of you. Why would you just I, I don't see the point of doing so. If you enjoy something, keep to it, man. Like, yeah. don't, don't care about what other people think. Yeah, you like something, like it. If you hate something, hate it. It's fine. Just yeah. don't hurt people in the process. Don't force people to delete their accounts. Don't stalk them. Don't, don't bully them. Like, what do you have to gain from this? Like, honestly, okay, okay, okay. You tell me. What do you gain from trolling someone? Like, what is that you get from trolling somebody? Aside from, you know, getting a kick out of the person getting mad. Because I have friends who troll people for uh, for sports. For sport. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but there is this guy. He's a sweetheart, but he can be a complete... That's not a word! When it comes to trolling people on Derpy Voodoo. And, <laughs> and many times I'm like... This is not a funny troll, or like this guy isn't even trying. This is this is kind of silly, like, oh god damn it! So I'm like because I have seen so many worse ways to troll in somebody, or a, or an entire website for that matter. <laughs> yeah, true. I just don't know. I mean, if if really if you're gonna talk about leaving the fandom and stuff, let's talk about me. I am going to reach episode 100 next week. And my inbox or emails or whatever it is, is pretty low. I don't get much at all. Unlike Bronyville or even Brony Time, I don't get emails that much. But I still keep at it because I know people listen to it. They enjoy hearing me talk. I've always said this from day one. Even if there's one person who listens to me, I am going to keep producing content for him or her. Because there's someone who is listening to the show. And luckily enough for me, I've made affiliates with Ponyville Live. 
that boosts up my um, listener count by a lot. And I thank them for that. And, well, I am appreciated for that. And getting my show posted on EQD every week. Um, thank you, Seth, for doing so. And thank you, Kelpin, for doing so. I never ask much. And hitting episode 100 with our guest coming soon, I, I don't know what to say. I'm <laughs> I'm quite nervous right now. Oh, no. <laughs> you better be. Oh, yeah. But still, do things because you enjoy them. Not do things because you want to be popular. If you do things to become popular, you won't go far. you burn out quick. If you try to gain popularity from being something within a fandom, you... Okay, two words of advice. First one, don't. Second, don't try to... Don't, uh, better have something really original to bring to the table, okay? And third, don't get angry when that very original thing that you have falls down the drain, forgotten by everybody. Okay? Mm -hmm. I have seen so many projects, and I have seen so many people quitting on the entire fan base because they just couldn't get away with what they wanted to offer. And what they usually had was just something so incredibly... That's not a word! Uh, that I, oh uh, God. Okay, pony cart comes to mind when it, when I think about it. Uh, pony cart was due to scheduling problems and a lot of uh, personal matters. Yeah, you know the 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 personal matters. I believe the scheduling problems. I don't. I'm sorry. I have the problem that that project had way too many fields involved, and mm. it had too much drama going on at the same time. Oh really? No, I I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, I have read on I have read on the people who were working on the Pony Car project. Uh, I think one of the guys behind it was going uh, was going through an investigation for tax evasion. Oh my! Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how true that is. I'm not sure how true that is. You know, rumors on the internet they can mean anything. <laughs> But, yeah, that kind of thing. So, even with a very original idea and with a lot of enthusiasm about it, you can fall through. So, be careful. Yeah, true, true. But the thing is, do things because you enjoy doing them, not because you want to be popular. Um, take a look, see at, like, even the popular ones. Like, uh, let's take an example for Mando Pony. He did it because he enjoyed doing music. And he is, well, he is a music creator by trade. So doing ponies and music is kind of a given. And James here, for example, he do art. So why not do pony art? Oh, come on. I mean, like, like I said, do things I'm because not, you... No, it's just I say, oh, come on, because I'm not worthy to be put as an example. I'm just a guy. Uh, you use someone else. Like, use, a, use a successful person like John Joseco, Pixel Kitties, Mega Street, or Atril. Like those guys, those guys completely dominate when it comes to the artwork scene. Yeah, but James... You do this because you enjoy it, right? I love it. I enjoy it. I have so much fun with it. And, well, with those awesome last words, we should end this, James. I, th I think we're running a bit too long. Yeah, because for an episode where we did nothing, we just did a lot. <laughs> Can't ask another question. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I want to address this one. I like it. Now, you see, this is what's cool about doing a QA and a episode right before episode 100. That's cool. This is the show that never ends. <laughs> okay, Ken Tax 2012 asks, what do you think about Ponies the Anthology 3? You go first, Norman. I like it. That's it? There's a few reasons. Okay, um, first, there's a section about thanks, Amy Larson. <laughs> That's funny. I like that. And there's a whole section about video games. So I like that. And there's a whole section about randomness. I like that too. And the thing that kills me is the Street Fighter meme. Who, whoever played Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, you would get that. And that is so much fun. And you, James? I think it sucks. Really now? Yeah. I mean, the intro was really good. The intro mm -hmm. was great. Uh, there were a couple of jokes that were very funny. I remember laughing at them, but I don't remember them. Because there is an overload of thanks M.A. Larson jokes and jokes that were funny three years ago. This video looks and feels and sounds like it was meant to be released six months before it was released. There are many tire memes. 
many jokes that don't have the same impact as as before. When I saw the joke where Pinkie Pie steps out of the balloon and she falls through the clouds, I was like, we were doing this three years ago. We don't need this. We are tall. This is not funny. I wasn't laughing at the at the at the video. I was groaning. Ponies the Anthology 1 was brilliant. Ponies the Anthology 2 was even better than that. It was amazing. I love that ending with the, the whole parody of 2001, even if it went on for a bit too long. It was very good. It showed that they put a lot of effort into it. But when it comes to Ponies the Anthology 3, just boring, boring, repeated, boring. Oh, hey, maybe that's... No, boring. Ah. Uh, I was groaning the whole time going, oh my God, please stop doing this and do something original. How long is this? I have an hour and 20 minutes left. This has been going for only 10 minutes. Oh my God. I watched the entire thing. No, thank you. I didn't like it at all. I have the same problem with it that I have with Double Rainbow, which in my opinion, it's one of the worst things that comes, that came out of this fandom. Um, is that tire, tire memes, tire jokes, not a lot of creativity, trying to supply intelligence with content. I don't know. I mean, personally, I like it, but it could be the humor that I see in it and you see it, things differently. Yeah. I just didn't like it. I was really disappointed because I was looking forward to it. I follow Jay Haler, which is one of the, edit- one of the main editors for the, for, uh, for the project. I follow him on YouTube, and I was following his updates. And I was like, oh my god, Pony's the Anthology is coming out, it's coming out, oh, it's coming out, I'm going to go watch it. Uh, so, James, if Pony 4 comes out, what do you think? Like, um, high expectation or low expectation? Pony's the Anthology. Mm-hmm. I don't care. You had one chance to woe me. I'm not even going to bother. I hate being that guy, but I, I fell through with it. I have a story with PMBs and AMBs and all that. AMB Hell 3 is probably one of my favorite movies of all time. And I say movie because it's one of the most basic concepts of cinema. It's motion, uh, uh, pictures in motion and music. AMB Hell 3 has that down to a T. It's perfect. And it's it's wonderful. That got me interested in checking AMBs and PMBs in general. AMB Hell 3 was supposed to be the last one. Then they did AMB Hell 4, and it was very good as well. It, it went way too long, but it was it was okay. And then they did AMB Hell 5. That was really boring, and it went on forever. And I was like, okay, that's it, no more. And then they did AMB Hell 6. I watched it. I fell asleep. I have the feeling that Ponies the Anthology is going the same route. Well, mostly the Anthology series, their memes to itself, and how much memes can you take for a session? Yeah, but you see, that's not an excuse. That's ju- you're basically describing the whole thing. I know, I know what they were going for. They wanted to make something long. They wanted to make something compelling. They wanted to make something that could last Forever! <laughs> but, in my opinion, they should have made it, like, half an hour shorter. Do you think that this could also play into personal preference? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would have, I would have liked the, the whole thing a lot more if it was half an hour shorter. Mm, okay. A video about videos doesn't have the right to be so long, okay? That went on for way too long. Talking about long things, this episode is running too long too. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yeah, it's kind of ironic, but that's because people <laughs> keep asking questions, and I don't want to be rude and ignore them. I am very happy acknowledging all the questions and all the pe- all the things that people might be interested uh, to mm. to know about. Yeah, especially the good questions and um, audience interaction is fun because we love answering three questions and very necessary too. Indeed, and thank you guys, thank you Kenta, and thank you. Oh, I'm dropping on names. Thank you, Carpanese, Kenta, Ashkin, Corner, Simon, Kim Penn, Lycant, Ransik, Shin, and John Lyons. Thank you guys for showing up and coming here. And Ace, of course, let's not forget Ace. Thank you guys for coming over. You guys are cool. Indeed, you guys are awesome. So anyway, uh, let's end this. So, shoutouts. My first shoutout goes to you, James. Thank you for being an awesome guy. No, I'm not awesome. I'm not, I'm not- That's not a word. People are going to tell you into this episode. They're going to send you emails saying, get rid of that guy. We hate James Cork. I'm, mm. I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going. 
I have too much work to do anyway. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> oh, no, I still think you're awesome. And also to your stream, like Ace Leaves, Ash King, Carpenese, Corn NG, Kenta, GTS 2012, Kimpen 97, Lycan, Rin and uh, Zing 255, and your Lions. Thank you, guys. And James, what about you? I want to give a shout out to you for bringing me over here and basically becoming kind of like a target for every <laughs> type of... Oh my God, James Corp, what the hell is wrong with you, you weirdo? Uh, but thank you for bringing me over because I have a lot of fun doing this. Uh, it's kind of weird to think of my weekend afternoons and uh, not think about uh, doing the show with you. Welcome to my life, James. <laughs> uh, who else, James? And of course, I want to give a shout out to my entire fandom because I discovered the other day that I have a fandom, which is weird. Well, yeah. You have a fandom? Yeah, because I am like, oh my god, I have these people that rally, rally for me, and they will... I, I realize this because I, I have been doing a lot of reblogs lately, and mm-hmm. reblogs of many random stuff, and I have, like, 15 people who reblog every single thing that I reblog as well, and they give comments and all that, and oh my god, you're my fandom, they're, they're my fans, it's lovely, I love it. So I want to give a shout out to them as well. Awesome. I need to get to the tumblers because Tumblr sounds fun. Eh, but anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at thebeershowgmail.com. And if you would like to email us personally, emails can be found in the show notes. You can also follow us on Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. Sweetie, what will interact with you? Fortunately for me, she is not on this episode and she is going to be editing this episode. Yay! I don't have to do anything. And you can follow me at Norman Sanzo. I usually post stuff about food, toys, and whatever tickles my fancy. And James, what about you? I am at James Cork on Twitter. Uh, uh, my Tumblr is askmovieslate.tumblr.com. Uh, I have my mod Tumblr as well over there. I'd rather not say it. It's very long. And you can check my DeviantArt on jamescork.deviantart.com. Awesome, awesome. And also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. Yes, we have the Facebooks. Links will be provided in the show notes. I have been Omar Sanzo. I have been James Cork. And next week is episode 100. And we got Amy Keating Rogers on. Oh my god. Ah. No the alarm routine. Activate. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye. Good night. Bye. Treading lightly on broken glass Wanna hit first but you fall to last Seems the world is shutting down The cup is half full but it won't fill in The grim emotions waking in my skin The weight of purpose could make me drown Take me the sky and we'll lie up the night as we clean out the dark and the lost in my heart so we'll fly in the sky turn around into rays let me know I'm alright in your eyes take me
Issue one is out and it features Pinky Pie and sorry, um, it features Apple Pie, Apple what? Apple Pie, Apple Pie, and Pinky and Pinky Jack. Uh, no, I wrote it down Apple Pie. Oh gosh! You wrote down uh, Apple Pie. You filthy <laughs> shipper! What the hell is wrong with you? Get out okay. of my show! I despise you. I have over you. I, I see you freak oh, of nature who ships pretty horses. <laughs> oh, it's just the guy who draws ponies. <laughs> he really oh, you are, a, you are an abomination and shall be torched. <laughs> uh, okay, go on. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Oh, you're you going to edit that part. God damn it. Nope, I'm going to use it as blooper. <laughs> So anyway, three, two, one. But for me, season one, um, best night ever would be my favorite. And oof, this is hard without the wiki in front of my face. Uh, give me a second to open up the wiki because I am not the dictionary like James here. He can remember all the episodes. I can. You, if you want to ask one or if you have a doubt of what episode was which, go ahead and ask me. I, I'm going to try and crash my Photoshop when doing that. So... <laughs> Oh God. I'm okay, not even joking. I think I'm going to crush my Photoshop. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to just close my Photoshop and open it again. Because yeah, save it first. Save yeah, it first. Yeah, yeah, save this. It's saved. It's saved. And my inbox or emails or whatever it is, is pretty low. I don't get much at all. You're leaving the fandom. <laughs> no. People don't love you enough. I'm leaving the fandom. I'm leaving the fandom for you, Norman. <laughs> 